Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. And if you're enjoying what you're seeing on the channel at the moment, the links to our social media are coming up on the screen now, including things like our Patreon, where you can help support the channel and help us grow. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're here at the Eastern Bass Enthusiasts Depot because today is the day of Finland Bass Fest. And you see, they're going to be taking some of their many, many buses to this show. In fact, they have more buses than they do drivers. Enter me. I'm driving a bus today. So here we are in the line, ready to disappear off to do bus fest. I've got my CT thing here. Now, the big thing to take from this is I have no idea where we're meant to be going. Uh, my instructions are to follow the bus in front. If I lose the bus in front, panic, basically. So I'm in a Volvo B10M, which was in service, or at least it's in the livery of Whippet. And that's basically what I can tell you about this. Because they haven't told me any more. Um, it's got a horn. It's got plasticky things here that look like wood but aren't. It's a steering wheel cover. Uh, I have problems here so I could open my doors. In a minute we're going to be going that way. Oh, right, here we go. And away we go. Now it's a push button system on this. The bus is moving, bus in front, bus behind, bus convoy. Now what we are doing here, ladies and gentlemen, is one of nature's greatest sights, and that is the convoy. And our, yes, I know, I ripped that out of the Simpsons, but it is one of the greatest sights known to mankind, a convoy of vehicles. And to be part of it, well, that's quite exciting. Yeah, to be like, oh, would you like to come and drive a bus for us? Oh, yes, yes, I would. You obviously know me well. You know the kind of thing I'd like to do. And it's quite cool. Now, as you know, guys, I am not a bus enthusiast. But I still very much appreciate doing something like this. And, like, being part of something like this, for me, is fantastically good fun. So I've got to follow my bus in front. Buses behind. Buses everywhere. This is actually ridiculously good fun. I am really, really am. Like we've had these started, and I'm worried, like, this is good fun. Now, this is on airbag suspension, I think, which is what you can hear making noise, or at least that's what I'm telling myself the noises are, so I don't panic about the bus. That window rattles slightly, and that's less than ideal, but I will follow him along there. I'll follow him wherever he will go. Drive the bus, ignore this blokey enter the bus, swing it round, uh, it's a bus convoy. All that matters is I can see the bus in front of me, I can see a bus behind me. We are a convoy! The convoy is alive. So here we go. Not really doing the speed limit, but that's fine. Now when I say that, I mean we are well under. It's a 50 mile an hour limit and I'm barely doing 50 kilometers. But, uh, it's inside the sun. So, let me tell you a bit more about driving this bus. I like it. It's an automatic gearbox, as we said. The throttle response is pretty instantaneous. The gearbox is a little bit slow to make up to mind so far, but that's fine. Honestly, if you've not done this kind of thing where you've driven in a convoy before, then I highly recommend going and joining some kind of group where you can, because the sensation of this is amazing. Now, I, originally, when we started talking about this last night, there were eight meant to be in this convoy. I think six were actually going to be part of it this morning, and I think there's five of us part of it now. What an adventure, anyway. I'd like to point out as well, before uh, driving this convoy, being part of this little adventure, I've never driven this bus. This is my first experience with it, and we're driving it to a show. Unbroken convoy, that's what we've got right here. Quite enjoying the convoy to us. As we get up to a heady 40 miles an hour. And again, I'd like to stress, as much as I'm trying to make sure I don't lose the guy behind me, which we did earlier because I got excited, um, I don't really know where we're going at all. I, it's not even to the degree that if you're doing a road trip with people and you kind of, 
you, you know, you're going to somewhere in Wales and you know vaguely where that is and if the group gets separated, that's annoying, but you know, it kind of, that's fine, it works. I'm not good. I don't even know where I am now. I vaguely know where the yard is and I can pretty much get to the yard now. But in terms of the rest of the area up here, not, not a Scoobies. The big thing to note about this is that whenever we've featured a bus before on the channel, and we have many more buses lined up, I've always had somebody with me, a chaperone, an owner's rep, somebody there to help me if I get into trouble. Today I've got nobody. You can see from behind, all through this bus, that it's just me. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I mean, sure, if I run into trouble, there are other bus drivers following and in front. But still, it's quite vindicating to be like, here, yeah, bus, never driven before, off you go. Right. Thank you. I shall. And I shall have. The other horrific thing I've just realised is, although we're travelling through the fens at the moment, somewhere I don't know, where we're going is a town that I don't know. And I'm going to have to drive this and park it up in the town. I'm going to be honest with you guys. It's a very different experience to driving this up and down open fen roads as it is to trying to put it into a town. Oh, it's, I say with very little experience of the matter, but I'm making big assumptions here. One bus, two bus, three bus, four bus, five bus. One bus, two bus, three bus, four bus, five bus. Yes, five bus. What's meant to be, to be fair, this is like a duck level of uh, success, isn't it? Like, you know, duck starts life with many ducklings, gets through and has about three big ducklings. That's how I feel about this. We started with eight buses, currently we've got five. But in duck logic, we're actually doing quite well at the moment. In terms of how many buses <laughs> that were meant to leave have turned up, uh, maybe not quite so well. It's also not rapid. I think that's another thing to put from this is, I appreciate as a bus, it's not meant to be putting you back in your seat, but when you've been driving there, because you kind of get this, you know where you want the throttle to be, or you think you know, you about this much throttle will do. And I'm constantly with this having to be like, no, it needs more. Right. I literally don't know what the plan is. Nobody's given me more information than what I've just done, which is this terrible manoeuvre. And with that, we've successfully made our way to Busfest. Parked at the bus, put it where it needs to be, somewhere down there, and then we had to go and collect the cars, because we were told there was going to be a classic car gathering presenting the classic car gathering, two of which are LMN cars, two of which are LMN Associates cars, and one other. <laughs> we feel that we may have been missold. <laughs> Several people have come up and looked at these cars, mostly to say, are they meant to be here? No one's actually come up so far and looked at them in a way of, we're meant to be here. No, 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 people are just like, in fact, the organizers have twice come up to us to confirm, are these things meant to be here? which is absolutely marvellous. So with that, we're going to have a wander around and just look at some of the buses that are here.
It was later revealed to us that there was indeed meant to be a car show running during the event, although it was meant to be at a different location to the buses. But the organiser of it had fallen quite severely ill and as a result had been unable to organise it. But the good news is that for the next show, there will indeed once again be a car show. But for this year, uh, we were the entirety of the car show. So starting at the far end, now all the buses are moving around throughout the day, but start off with this, which is a Bristol low deck, and that's the kind of bus that I like, is this kind of period. And then we get onto these things, which are honestly, I don't know what they are, but there are lots of them. And if we keep going this way, we find more stuff, and more stuff that's got chrome on it. Now, it's quite a big variety of buses and coaches. For instance, I love this. I love the chrome, I love the, lack, the different types of headlights. In fact, we've got high beam, low beam, as different lights entirely. And then the Leyland here, with its rather swanky colour scheme, reminds me of DHL. I think that's cool. Now, you may recognise this one. That's what I drove here this morning, which is a Volvo B10M. And I really liked it. I like the fact it's blue. I like most things about it. Then we've got this here, which is a Western National liveried something. It's definitely a bus. Bear in mind that we are on the very scope of my edge of my knowledge here. I oh, it's a Leyland. That's what it is, Leyland National. And I like the fact that it's got the, the badge up saying that it's come to Fenlon Bus Fest. Then we have this, which coach I'm thinking of. Oh, this is a Volvo with a Van Hoolis body on it. I think it's with B10M again. So that's the same chassis underneath that as the double decker I drove. And then we have this, which is gorgeous. And that's a Dennis. And that's proper. Now back behind me are some of the more interesting vehicles for my own kind of taste. We've got two Route Masters, one in its traditional red livery, and one in the district green livery, which meant that that one went on the outside bits of London. The red one goes in the interior bits of London, like you, know, you recognize today. And beyond it is the yellow thing. And that is a Hong Kong Leyland Atlantean. So it's got three axles and it's a bit bigger and was obviously in Hong Kong to get the Hong Kong name. And it's been re-imported, I think came back here in 2005 and is genuinely a very cool. I've been chatting to the owners about that. It's something that's gonna hopefully turn up on the channel at some point in the future. Again, it kind of really shows the variety of different vehicles here and the different ages. And it really shows you how the look of the bus has evolved over the years. Because this is awesome. <laughs> we couldn't have framed that worse. And it continues this amazing variety of vehicles, like this one, the Lane Buses livery, which is gorgeous, the Leyland with all the chrome and the Tiger on the front, compared to a much more modern Van Hool, which is a DAF derived bus. But just having them side by side really reinforces that how things have changed. And then we have a standard kind of another Delane bus, but this is of another Volvo. And again, a more modern equivalent of it next door to it over here, which is very, very strange indeed. Just, they look so weird together, don't they? Old, new, new, newer. It's just weird. Again, we get this very good change between the modern Alexander Volvo in its stagecoach livery here. Moving on to this, which is a far later, well, far earlier Volvo, being double-decker as well. And in its Lincoln livery, which right, means something, I suppose. It's just, yeah different Volvos, different ages. I find this particularly striking, the red livery along with the chrome and the slightly curved windows works really well. This is a striking coach. I like that a lot. And then up there, it's another coach and that one's originally from Sudbury in Suffolk, which is close to where some of us are based. And so local bus, long way from home like us, but we feel kind of drawn over there towards the bus that's nearest from home. Problem with shooting the road as well, bus coming from over that way. Now, one thing I think most about this is the fact that it's white. Now, I don't like white cars, mainly for the fact that you drive them, they get dirty and they're hard to keep clean. You've got all of this to try and keep clean and keep presentable and bring it anywhere. I mean, it must have been impossible, surely, to keep these things in half a decent condition as it wears through wherever it's going to. You can see the poor man arm getting very, very tired though, he's just trying to work out where he actually wants to take this bus. The upside is it does sound absolutely delicious. That's a really pleasant sound. Now, I appreciate this electric thing is the future, but wouldn't you rather go on that? That makes a pleasant sound, but it's beautiful. I, look at that. That is a piece of art. And this, 
It's important that modern companies bring new vehicles to these kind of events. That's very important. But it seems out of place. And it just really kind of shows what I don't like about modern design, the whole plasticness of it, the rubbish lights on it. And it's electric. It's got no place here. But yeah, it's very cool that they've actually bought it here and they support events and kind of support the community. I think that is cool. But I just don't like electric vehicles. Again, one of these lineups where they got to the old and the new side by side, which is just a lovely combination, isn't it? To kind of see how things have evolved as time's gone on. Uh, again, I love this. I love the chrome. I love the colours. I love the two-tone of it. It's all just gorgeous. And compared to its modern replacement, which is the same age as my 106, it's just not got the same kind of gravitas to it, has it? But it's still interesting to see the things side by side and see how the coach has evolved. Now, there are quite a number of different buses and coaches here at the event, um, but there is literally nothing cooler, apart from the cars we've bought, than this. Now, isn't this not awesome? Holding the double axle at the front for steering. And who came up with this concept? Uh, we could put double axle at the back for the weight, or we could have them at the front and make just complexity of having all the extra steering things. But it's awesome, and obviously it harks straight back to the Italian job, doesn't it? You could look at that and immediately think the Italian job. It's awesome. Not only is it beautiful, it's strange and amazingly cool. And out of all the buses I've seen today, that's what I want to take home. So there's plenty of things that have made me laugh today, but I don't think anything more than this particular board, which you can't see on the phone because it's LED, but there we go, as it flashes up. Yes. For those of you who can't understand flicker of frame rate versus this thing, it said, help my driver's lost. One of the most notable things about Busfest is the fact that many of the vehicles in attendance actually offer you the chance to go for a ride on them. So you can sample different buses, what the ride quality is like, how they sound, and just enjoy traveling on different things. They travel on a variety of routes, going to different destinations, some of which include things like the Fenlands Light Railway and to the aforementioned Classic Car Show when it actually happens. And they also go to a handful of other events that coincide with the same date. So with that being the case, we thought it'd be rather rude not to take them up on their offer and go for a ride. So we went and joined the queue. <laughs> it's souvenir shopping. I don't know what's going on, I've just been given stuff. <laughs> That's it, I'll, I'll take it. You held your hands out, I thought you were gonna... <laughs> I now don't know what's happening even more. I was given bits and I've had the bits taken away from me. <laughs> so, it's a bit like going to a railway gala. You get out one train, get off at the station, wait for another one, gets into an entirely different experience. And frankly, I think this is the way to do it. Even as someone who isn't a bus enthusiast, I appreciate this and being able to hop on different buses and example different ways of doing it. Like this particular thing. Now, this isn't original with the backward facer seats and the, the table and the desk and the lamp, but it's awesome, isn't it? This is fantastic. As soon as we saw it, we walked past, we looked at like, That's very unusual. So we've managed to, uh, and get to go out on a run on it and it's it's unlike any other bus I've been on I feel like I'm on a train on the road and it's fantastic so it is in fact the way to just relax now something like this always makes me feel and I know I've said it many times during this video already but how things have changed and how we've kind of changed our standards of what the interior of a bus or coach on public transportation as a whole should be. This feels homely and nice. This is a nice place to be. And if I was forced to travel up to Scotland in this, this would be wonderful. You just sit there, got plenty of leg room. You can sit back, relax, do something with your desk. It's just really, really nice. Big windows, the curtains, the general upholstery of it all. It's just homely, it's pleasant. And it's got character to it, which is something that we'd lack, I think, in our modern vehicles. They're plastic and soulless, whereas this has shed loads of character and soul. And it just makes it such a much more interesting and enjoyable thing to be on and makes the entire journey more, well, enjoyable, more purposeful. Life is about the journey, not the destination. This is very much the vessel to do the journey in. And of course, it does have this rather large rumbling diesel engine, which is just very attractive. I mean, yes. And when you hit the right frequency, you get that massage thing going on, which means this actually has massage chairs as well. Just got to hit the engine revs just right and you get that nice little, ooh, sensation going on. It's just, I like this. I feel whenever we sit in something like this and compare it to the modern equivalent, I look at it and think, where did we go wrong? 
because clearly this was the way forward this was the way to travel and it's all gone so terribly terribly wrong all too soon however the day was over and it was time to head back to base i'm going as well sorry bud i've chosen my road so um that's the end of bus first we're in a different bus that i've been told that i'm driving which has been made more terrifying by the concept they've told me that this is also a unique survivor there's none other with this style of body left in the world and they were like yeah you take it home that'll be fine and i was like okay no worries so that's fine so yes we're just trundling home i believe it's been a successful day there's been lots of happy people lots of happy bus people have enjoyed riding on a vast collection of different bussy vehicles oh, i'm getting up the curb because it makes a voice there that was a bit curvy but that's fine a bit close to that boy and away we go so um yeah it's been really good fun we've had a couple of rides we've seen many things we've seen many buses some of which i enjoy a lot more than others make steep corners driving around roundabouts in buses oh yes and now we drive back to the depot uh, not in a full convoy in fact in a slightly lesser convoy a uh, convoy being bus in front that, that that is the extent of the convoy today now a little bit about this thing it's a volvo it drives pretty much as you'd expect from a volvo i can do some speed with it automatic gearbox which is sluggish the silly automatic you press what you want it to do thing yeah that's about it from it actually though drives quite nice genuinely impressed and also worth noting is i have passengers meet the uh, rest of my associates for the day that's just fun i actually really enjoy buses I, I know nothing about buses, but I enjoy driving buses. But I think that's not so much buses as I just enjoy driving large things. I know lots of people who enjoy driving small, lightweight cars and things. And I, I do enjoy that. But there's something about driving a big pondering beast that takes up the entire road, which is just so much more appealing. And this, this is really nice. And also kind of being at a bus event and having done a day at a bus event. Everybody's kind of looked up and smiled at it as we've been trundling around the town as we've been leaving. It's been a real pleasant day out and kind of to have helped out in a very small way of delivering bus and returning bus so that one more bus could make the event has been really nice. So it'll be a real nice thing to be asked to do and a massive thing to be given opportunity to drive and been told you're fine, off you go, enjoy it. And uh, not once again have any chaperone of any sort apart from matt matt's effectively my chaperone but now as it was i drove a double decker on the way up and now a single i know it sounds blindingly obvious to say this but the sensation from going from double decker we've got all that extra mass up there and it finds every bump in the road and tilts and sways more to a single decker is just so different and so much more pleasant being in this without it. Also, I'm higher up in this. This is more my preferred seating position to be slightly elevated. I don't like it when you're sat with a big vehicle sat right on the floor like you are in a double decker. This slightly higher suits me from my HTV background and obviously trundling around everywhere I can in Jupiter. This is very pleasant. In fact, as buses go, I think this is superb. I very much enjoy this. So the rev limiter on this kicks in at 1500 RPM. So you'll be sat there with your foot hard to the floor at 32 miles an hour trying to go a bit faster and it will just sit there going no so you've got to take your foot off wait for it to think about who it is what it wants the answer to life the universe and everything what the weather's doing and then it will think about changing up and then you can put your foot back down by which time you've slowed down enough that you probably should still be in the gear you went previously this is my big gripe with automatic gearboxes that just i hate them i hate auto gearboxes I think I might be in top gear and I think it's much sp this top speed maybe 45 miles an hour. I don't think I've got any more. Foot off. Shift up. No. This is top speed. We're, I have maxed out this bus at 45 miles an hour. 
There we go, that's another LMM achievement. Max bus speed of 45. As we return through the fens back to the depot, which will mark the end of Fenland Bus Fest 2021, we've got to say a massive thank you to the Eastern Bus Enthusiast Group for inviting us along and for running the whole event. It's been actually a remarkably good fun and we hope you too have enjoyed this walk around and seeing what's going on and thinking about turning up and attending for next year's event. It certainly is quite good fun and yeah, it, it's I've actually thoroughly enjoyed it, mostly because I've got to drive things, which always makes my day particularly good. Let us know in the comments below what you've enjoyed seeing most and what vehicles out of everything that you're more interested in us actually featuring on the channel and trying to get for review. And with that, that's the end of the video. And of course, I suppose that some of you may be asking that important question that if we four who are on this bus are four of the owners of the entirety of the car show at Fenland Bus Fest 2021. If we're on the bus going to the depot, where are our cars? Yes, we, we may have made some floor and got overexcited about the concept of a bus ride and me driving and they're all still back there. So since we parked this up, someone needs to, to give us a lift to go pick up the cars so we can go home. Which, yes, bit of a floor.